right, coming up on 10.05, so we'll go ahead and get started. My name is Brian Miller. I'm the IT manager at American Digital Security. And what we'll be going over today in this presentation is going to be the Vigilant Control Center 7 and upgrades and new features that you'll be seeing in this release. Uh, what I do ask is that you probably stay muted for the meeting, and what we'll have is we'll have a question and answer section at the end. So please save your questions for the end, and we'll go ahead and get started on this. So one of the new things that they're going forward with in a Vigilant 7 is a change in their next generation video analytics. You'll see this in the H5A cameras. And what they're moving to now is a convoluted neural network. Basically what that means is the camera operates in a similar manner to your brain. Uh, whereas the H4A cameras and the H3A cameras worked on machine learning, where you send it a bunch of examples, and then it uses those examples to determine the objects. The H5A cameras now are, as mentioned, a convoluted neural network, and it actually then is able to determine the object itself. Uh, one of the biggest changes that you'll see in this from the previous generation of analytic cameras is the fact that it can actually do classified object detection while the objects are stationary. Uh, again, where previously we had to have motion and movement for that machine learning pattern to detect a person or a vehicle. Now we've got it to where it actually looks at it. And similar to what your brain does, right, we'll see that object in there and then determine whether that's a person, a vehicle, a truck, anything like that. Um, and that's obviously going to continue going under, undergoing improvements throughout the time uh, of the life cycle of the product. <clears throat> With that though, with the new convoluted neural networks of analytics, they are also redesigning the live operator feel uh, of using a Vigilant Control Center 7. So color is no longer used to distinguish the different object classes in ACC 7. Instead, now what we're doing is a different overlay. So teal is going to be your default color. And then as you can see in the image on the right there, there's a little box there determining that it's a person, right? So that's going to be your classified object detection is a teal color. And then you'll have an icon referencing if that is a person or a view. Vehicle. Yellow is going to be used now for an unusual object activity, such as unusual motion detection or any other analytics that may come over the time of the uh, life cycle of the product. And red is going to be used for an alert or a potential threat. We're still going to see those bounding boxes, but again, it's changing the way that we're using those. Uh, since we are focusing on the live operator uh, use case and experience in ACC7, one of the new features that they've added is the focus of attention feature. What focus of attention can be used for is it's used as a, an alert method. Uh, what you'll often find in a central monitoring station or a big operating uh, place. Let me go ahead and mute this phone real quick here. Uh, what you'll find in that is basically it's a little bit overwhelming to look at more than about 30 cameras at once, right? You begin to get very small screens. Finding that activity on the screen is very difficult. With focus of attention now, what they're doing is they're allowing a more efficient way for monitors to get alerted of those features. And we'll show you an example of this in the next slide. So this is what focus of attention is looking like in ACC7. It does require a Vigilant Enterprise licensing to get this feature. Uh, but what it can be done is you can logically group cameras. So you can see they've got like West camera, LPR camera, multi sensors and such of the sort. And it allows you then to see activity on those cameras via the color of the activity and then a clip on the actual left hand side if you wanted to see the event itself. And they'll show you a kind of blue is going to be a motion event, teal is going to be a classified object event, red is going to be alerts. Of course, they have all of this in the help file and we can help explain it to you. And here's kind of a quick rundown of that again. Motion being in that dark blue you can see on the left, unusual motion detection and video analytics rules that teal color and alarms being red. And with that focus of attention, then it allows an operator to more efficiently see what's going on in their system at a time rather than having to look at cameras and kind of view exactly what's going on. Now we have a smart analytics way to say the events that are going on and alert an operator to that attention. We can also then use that to integrate such as with third party objects such as like the Halo smart sensor. We can have that trigger an alarm event or a rule for that focus of attention. And with the acquisition from Motorola now we can also have that integrate with their radios. Um, some of the next events that we'll be seeing come out within this focus of attention feature are going to be the gun detection as well as the facial recognition piece, which I know is a pretty hot button item now, and we'll actually hit on that next. What we have in ACC7 now in the most recent release is the face match events for focus of attention as well as the analytics for the facial recognition. And you'll see that's actually shown now as a yellow object in, fo in focus of attention. And what it does is it finds a reference image. 
uh, that you can either grab from your video or you can upload from an image itself. And then it begins to match that based upon the analytics camera. It does require the analytics kit in the server if you don't already have that. Most NVR3 and now NVR4s come with the analytics kit already installed, but we can add that on if it is an older server. And again, it can be used also for historical face matches. And what we've got here is a little video of it in action. Let's get this to load. And so what you'll see here is we've actually got people walking through the scene and it's facial recognizing them as they walk through the scene. We've got a couple different people wearing hats, a black and white photo that was uploaded, and then images that are actually pulled from the historical data itself. Very quick in the facial recognition. And again, you can tell it looks for beards, everything like that, glasses. It's able to work through that and actually match the facial recognition. Also in ACC7, one of the new features now is we have a user interface refresh. So you'll find that a lot of apps these days are doing that, but now we have two UI themes available, light and dark. Again, it's a very common thing. You'll find that in iOS, Android, everybody's coming out with a dark theme. And what it's used for is, again, to reduce eye strain. You might find in a dimly lit environment that white's a little bit harsh on the eyes. It might be too bright. Uh, very difficult and kind of allow for less time for that person to be operating. But what we have now is the dark theme. So we'll show two examples here. So in the user interface refresh, we also have a flattening of the buttons here. It looks kind of a little bit more modern, but this is going to be the light theme that we have. And then also on the next slide, we have the dark theme you can see. So that would be very great. And again, a low light environment if you're in a live video monitoring center um, with a lot of screens and not a lot of light. <clears throat> Next up in Avigilon 7 is we also have a change in the Avigilon appearance search technology, which allows you to obviously sort through a lot of video very quickly and find instances of a classified object that you want to find. Uh, some of the new features that you have in this instance is the search by age, so we can actually categorize now people by adults and children, uh, and all of the existing analytics kits already support this upgrade, so there's no need to change your analytics kit. Uh, the other changes that we also have now is for vehicles. We can actually sort by object type. So whether that be a car, a truck, a bus, a motorcycle, or even a bicycle now, we can find those differences. Whereas previously in ACC6, we were only able to differentiate between a person and vehicle. Again, now we're able to person, whether that be adult or child, vehicle being car, bus, truck, motorcycle, anything like that. Uh, this is enabled for all analytics cameras though, so don't think that you need H5A cameras for that. The analytics kit actually does all of the heavy lifting for this appearance search upgrade. So again, that's why those existing H3As, H4As, H5A cameras are able to support that. Another new feature that we're finding in Avigilon 7 is they have moved all of their cameras, uh, new cameras, to be OnVIF Profile T compliant. Uh, if you've ever worked with OnVIF in the past or OnVIF currently, what that is is that's an open network standard for video devices. Uh, OnVIF Profile S, which is what they were previously based on, was basically just stream acquisition, so being able to pull the video in, but not necessarily record it. Uh, what we have now with OnVIF Profile T is better support for motion, two-way audio, digital inputs, configuration, and some of those advanced uh, features such as H.265 encoding. What this allows for is better interoperability uh, with third-party cameras to be added to the Avigilon system if they are OnVIF Profile T compliant. You'll find other manufacturers such as Axis are OnVIF Profile T compliant as well. One thing to keep in mind though in doing this, as we've got a note at the top there, is going to be the firmware support. So again, while a camera may say it's OnVIF Profile T, make sure that it's on the current firmware that's supported from that, uh, and make sure that we're on the correct version of the software supporting that supported firmware. Um, another kind of quick feature just to touch on as well is the nice change in OnVIF Profile T is for multiple sensors on an OnVIF camera. So where you might have dealt with in the past a video encoder that may have been four, eight, or 16 channels, previously that was for eight or 16 licenses. Now with OnVIF Profile T, that's just a single license that can be added. With ACC7, there are some changes in the actual OS support of the software and the version compatibility and installer form factor. What we're looking at now is we've got a recommended uh, Windows 10 is the minimum variant that you need to be. ACC7 does not support Windows 7, and we're going to end up with a lot of different 7s and 10s in this slide, but uh, when ACC7 does need to be running on Windows 10 or a Windows 10 variant, whether that be server 2016 or server 2019 or again Windows 10. Uh, we are also upping our recommended specs, so whereas we previously suggested 4 gigs kind of are in that recommended, we are moving to 8 gigs of RAM. 
Uh, so again, just something to keep in mind. We do want to get you upgraded to Windows 10. Windows 7 for the OEM support ended in January. However, Windows 7 Embedded goes until October of this year, so we still do have some time on most servers to get them upgraded. I uh, definitely want to be reaching out to you if you have any questions on that. We want to reach out after this call and kind of devise a plan to get you upgraded and moving as soon as possible. ACC 7 clients are compatible with the ACC 6 software. Fully compatible, you can do everything in an ACC 6 server using the ACC 7 client. However, ACC 6 clients can log into ACC7, but we can't do any of the administrative functions, right? We can do our basic streaming, we can do our live, our recorded, our search, but the appearance search and the administrative functions aren't available in ACC6 clients that are logging into an ACC7 server. Uh, during the upgrade process, if you do have multiple servers in a site, uh, it does allow you to upgrade them one at a time, but again, some of those features are gonna be limited until we get the entire site upgraded. Another change that we're seeing in ACC7 is a simplification of the license parts. This is definitely a benefit from us on the sales perspective, but also to you on the customer. Uh, Avigilon now offers a license portal where you can self-service your licenses. So you can transfer them from server to server. We can cut licenses apart or anything like that in the portal. We have access and we can also get you access as the end user to activate your licenses. But now we also have a change in the way licenses are sold. Previously, you would have to purchase them in packs of one, four, eight, 16, and so on and so forth. Now it's just a single line item that you have to purchase per site with the channels that you need. Um, and again, the bundles are gone. Basically what they've done in this is they've changed the pricing and made it a lot easier. Pricing's not going to affect anybody one way or the other. It's not gonna be more expensive or cheap. Basically what they've done is average that cost out. So upgrading to ACC7, we can do that from five or six, either one. You don't have to actually stair step it up. If you wanna go to ACC7 and you're currently running ACC5, we just wanna make sure you get to the latest ACC5 release, and then we can skip over version six and move you right to seven. And if you are on six, of course, that's just gonna be an easy upgrade. But again, we wanna to touch base and keep going back to ACC7 cannot be run on Windows 7. I know it says there that it will install. That's only going to be basically the first version of ACC 7. We want to make sure that we get you up to ACC uh, 7 with Windows 10 as well. Uh, one of the features that we're seeing for end users in there is actually going to be an enhanced workflow. So what we have now, if you've ever gone to export a long piece of footage, maybe a couple hours, you had to sit there and wait, and there's not much else you can do while it's exporting. What they have now, as you can see on the right here, is we have an export queue. So we can create a couple different exports at once and do all of that in a queue fashion rather than being locked to it. You can use that throughout your various tools, whether that be thumbnail, motion, or appearance search, and then it added to the queue where, again, we could go back and edit it if we, anything has changed and wait for that to all export. They've also added the ability now to export from the timeline itself. If you're like me, I like to scrub through the timeline, kind of going around, finding the video that I'm looking for. We no longer have to leave the timeline and then put in that time frame or anything like that via the brackets. We can just simply right click and add export as if we were to add a bookmark. Uh, makes things a lot easier in that method. Now, it wouldn't be a sales call with AES if we didn't actually touch base on some of the services that we offer in conjunction with ACC7 in this upgrade. We do offer a complete system health management and monitoring software uh, that can basically provide a hands-off approach to your server. What we offer in this is we offer alerting based upon server health, whether that be your CPU usage, memory usage, failed disks, or, or a camera that goes out. And we're offering that at $25 per server per month. If you do want to talk to that, please let us know and we'll get you in touch with your salesperson after the fact. But again, we're going to try and keep this pretty slow and short. And does anybody have any questions about ACC7 or any of the features that they'll be seeing in the new upgrade?